Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho and in this video I'm going to show you some of my favorite new features and what's new in Adobe Photoshop CC 2019 update. So opening up Photoshop, I've got a bunch of example pictures and canvases. And one of my favorite new features, probably the most fun to be honest, is if you open up the brush tool, you see on the top menu there's this new little butterfly with a line of symmetry through it and you have the symmetry brush options. So you could choose vertical, horizontal, diagonal, all these different symmetry lines. So do like five lines of symmetry. And if I grab the brush tool and begin painting, it'll automatically paint in lines of symmetry. So you can create these really awesome illustrations. It's fun, it looks cool, it's hard not to make it look cool. I'm just painting with my mouse here, but especially if you have a drawing tablet, I could see you making some really awesome illustrations and creations with this. But that is the symmetry tool for the brushes option. Speaking of painting, another cool thing we can do with the color selection is actually select from a color wheel now. So on the top right, if you ever had the window color panel open, you can now hit this little fly out menu and select color wheel. And now you can pick from a color wheel a little bit of a different way to get saturation, brightness, and hue selected and choose in that visual way. Let's switch back over to a photo instead of a blank canvas. Another new feature that they have is the frame tool. So this little, it looks kind of like the crop tool, it's right under it. And you can create rectangular or elliptical frames. So it can be a quick way to place images within the frame, let's say if masking or just in a certain section. So let's add this circular frame, I can adjust it so that it's the size that I want, which by the way, all of these photos that I'm working on are available in my free stock photo pack, which you can find on my website, justinodisha.com. So if you want to edit and practice along, you can actually download all of these photos you're going to see in this video. So if I have this photo on my desktop, I can click and drag that in and you can see the frame get highlighted and active. And I can just place it there and it'll automatically place within the boundaries of the, that frame. So don't have to do too much tedious masking. It's just kind of another workflow and I can always adjust the position or size of that frame to make it fit however I like. Another new feature that they have in Photoshop CC 2019 is the live blending modes preview. So let's say I didn't just want this to be on normal. I wanted it to be on a screen or multiply or whatever have you. Normally you'd have to click to see what it looks like, but it, now as soon as you mouse over, it'll give you a preview of what that blending mode looks like. So just a little bit faster. Another little workflow thing that they've done is undo, one of our favorite tools of all time, right? Command Z used to just undo once and then if you pressed it again, it would redo. So it would be undo, redo, undo, redo. And if you wanted to redo more, you'd have to hold a different shortcut like shift or option command Z. But now it automatically makes undo, just go backwards through the history panel over and over and over. And if you want to redo, now that's shift command Z over and over and over. So just a slight change in how that works. Might take some getting used to, but will probably be faster. Also, they've changed the way that transform works. So if I press Command T, which is the shortcut for edit free transform, normally when you start tra transforming, it would get all disproportionate. And you can hear this in hundreds of my Photoshop tutorials throughout the years, throughout like the past five years, I would say I'm going to hold shift to constrain proportions and drag. But now they switched it so that dragging it is by default constrained proportions, which I think is what you're usually trying to do. And if you hold shift, you can then drag in unconstrained proportions. So that also might take some getting used to for long time users, but I suppose it's more efficient. Also, instead of pressing enter, you can just click outside and it'll just confirm your adjustments. Switching over to a different picture, we also have some new functionality in the content aware tool. So the content aware, one of the best improvements of the past several versions, it allows us to just select a lasso point. So let's say I want to remove my shadow from this photo, select this lasso point and right click and fill with content aware. And that would usually do a pretty good job of figuring out what is nearby and filling in that space, which you can see it does do a pretty good job. But now if we wanted even more 
flexibility and choice in what's going on. If we go to edit content aware fill, we can actually choose exactly which parts to tell it to select from. So we could see the color green indicates the sampling area, the area that Photoshop can sample from. And let's say just for some reason, this, this little speck in the ground kept getting in the way and I didn't want it. I can tell Photoshop not to pick from this area. I don't want it to pick from that area. I can also tell it not to choose from any of these areas because that doesn't work. And we could just kind of have more options in refining and giving Photoshop more instructions on what to do. We also have the options now to output the content aware fill to a new layer, the current layer, or on a duplicate of the current layer. So just some more flexibility and options on how to do that a little bit non-destructively and with more options. Also a little update when it comes to adjusting text. Usually when you're moving it and then you want to get to adjusting the letters again, you'd have to go back to the text tool and uh, keep typing. But now when you're moving it and you want to adjust something about the text, you can actually just double click on it and it'll get you back to your text tool. So you could do whatever you like. Also, let's say we have multiple layers that we're working with. So I'm just hitting Command J to duplicate this a couple times. If I highlight all of these by holding Shift and clicking them all, and go to layer, align, and adjust things based on edges. But now you can also go to layer, distribute, and you can distribute things evenly based on the edges or centers. So let's evenly distribute these in horizontally, vertically, so now they're evenly spaced. And we can also evenly align them again. So they're evenly distributed, aligned, and everything. So that's a, another interesting way that you can work with shapes and text layers to make sure the spacing between them or between one or another layer is even. Another new improvement they've done is, let's say I want to resize this whole image. So if I went to image, image size, and I said, I know I need this to be half as big. I want it to be 50% as big. It's kind of hard to divide 5,472 really quickly in your head. So now you can actually just press divide by two and enter and it'll automatically divide it by two. So whatever that was. So you can now do some, some little bit of mathematical equations in here. Um, you can do times two and you can see it changes too. You've also got a couple of minor things. So previously this, you might not even notice it, but if you named a layer something really long, so let's call it background layer to end all background layers it would just cut off at the beginning. So I could keep duplicating that as much as possible and I maybe wouldn't be able to tell which was which, but now it puts an ellipses in between the middle and you have uh, the beginning and the end and then everything in the middle kind of gets cut off, which I guess could come in handy in some cases like this where you need to know which one it is and the beginning bit might be the same over and over. Aside from these, you can see a full list of some of the other minor adjustments on Adobe's help page, like support for Southeast Asian scripts, some preference functionality and camera raw additions. But those are some of the major updates, some of my favorites and how to use them and how they do work in Photoshop CC 2019. If you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like on it below. Let me know what you thought in the comments and what your favorite updates are and maybe what you want to see in the future. And if you want to learn Photoshop, I have hundreds of free tutorials here on my channel. So check out my playlist, subscribe for more, and go follow me on Instagram at Justin OD Show. It's the best place to keep in touch with me, see what I'm up to. And if you want to reach out to me, send me a DM on there. It's the best place to reach me. To be honest, I think Photoshop got some of the best uh, new features and improvements in, in this round of updates. Some fun ones too, like that symmetry brush. But let me know what you guys think. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.